We're continuing with the application of IFRS 15, Revenue Recognition. As always, we start by reading the question. Blue Ink manufactures and sells appliances to construction companies in bulk. KJJ Construction signs a contract with Blue to purchase 40 refrigerators on account for $900 each on May 12th. The refrigerators are delivered on July 2nd and KJJ is required to pay their account in full in 45 days. The refrigerators cost Blue $400 to manufacture. The refrigerators have a one-year manufacturer's warranty which stipulates that Blue will cover parts and service to fix appliances that do not perform to specifications at no cost to the owner. Blue estimates that, based on past experience, warranty costs are expected to be 5% of the selling price. When should Blue recognize revenue? What should be recorded on May 12th, July 2nd and August 14th at the end of the 45 days? We'll start by applying each of the steps in the revenue recognition process. Let me just move down the page. Step 1. Identify the contract. Blue and KJJ have signed a contract on May 12th. It's clear that they are committed to the performance obligations. The product is identified, 40 refrigerators. The payment terms are known. The refrigerators are sold on account and the balance has to be paid in 45 days. There is commercial substance because Blue Inc's economic position will be different after the sale. That's because they're exchanging refrigerators for eventual cash. Collection is probable because there is no indication that KJJ will have difficulty paying at the end of the 45 days. In addition, Blue Ink would not have sold to them if they thought that KJJ would have difficulty paying. All the criteria are met and therefore there is a contract. Let's move on to step 2. Identify the separate performance obligations. There is only one performance obligation, the delivery and warranty of the refrigerators. Why is the manufacturer's warranty not a separate performance obligation? Because each performance obligation must be distinct, meaning that it can benefit the customer on its own, separately. This basically means that the good or service can be used, consumed, sold, or generate economic benefit for the customer on its own. But the manufacturer's warranty is not distinct. You cannot use, consume, sell, or generate economic benefit from a one-year manufacturer's warranty alone. The warranty exists only with the refrigerator, and because of that, it does not have its own performance obligation. It does not have its own performance obligation. Therefore, there is only one performance obligation. The delivery and the warranty are together. The delivery and the warranty of the refrigerators are together as one. Step 3. Determine the transaction price. Step 3. Determine the transaction price. The price is specified in the contract. $900 each times 40 is $36,000. So the transaction price is $36,000 for this contract. Step 4. Allocate the transaction price to the separate performance obligations. This is not applicable. There is only one performance obligation. I'm going to move the page down for step number five. Step five. Recognize revenue when the performance obligation is satisfied. Revenue is recognized in the case of a good when there's been a transfer of control. Let's look at each individual date. May 12th. On May 12th, Blue and KJJ Construction signed a contract for the 40 refrigerators. Does KJJ on May 12th have control of the refrigerators? And the answer is, no, they don't. KJJ does not yet have the refrigerators in their possession, nor has there been any transfer of control. So May 12th is not when the performance obligation has been satisfied. What about July 2nd? On July 2nd, Blue delivers the 40 refrigerators to KJJ, and therefore there is a transfer of control. Blue actually meets multiple identifiers of this transfer of control, but I'm going to focus on the transfer of the risks and rewards of ownership. On July 2nd, KJJ has the risks of ownership, meaning that if KJJ accidentally damages one or more of the refrigerators, it will be their problem, not Blue's. 
so KJJ has 100% of the risk of ownership. KJJ also has the rewards of ownership because they can do whatever they want with the refrigerators. They could install them, they could sell them to their customers, they could simply throw them away if they really wanted to. KJJ, after they take delivery, has the right to do whatever they want with these refrigerators and therefore they have the rewards of ownership. So on July 2nd, KJJ has the risks and rewards of ownership and therefore control has been transferred. We've finished the five steps, so let's move on to the recommendation. Blue must recognize the revenue for the refrigerators on July 2nd because on that date they meet all of the revenue recognition criteria. Next, let's look at the entries.